Hello, welcome to Sketchbook Club. It's a tea time theme, as you can probably tell um, today. Um, we're going to um, create um, a spread of beautiful biscuits and plates and teacups, a real English tea. Um, and we're going to use some really fun techniques to recreate some of those biscuits and cakes and things. You'll see on your downloadables, you've got lots of lovely reference, beautiful teacup shapes and cakes. And you'll see there's a choice of templates. There's that simple one, which actually quite a lot of the children have chosen. Or there, there's a more complicated one, which is a bit more involved. Now you'll notice that the perspective is uh, forced. So some are um, bird's eye view, the plates, etc., and the teacups and everything else are side on. It doesn't matter. It's an illustration, adds to the charm of it, um, and it just means that it gives us license to um, create the biscuits bird's eye and the cake sideways and it has a lovely sort of jumbly um, colourful um, feel to it so don't worry. So for today you will need coloured tissue paper like this, um, some brown paper, I'm just using a brown envelope so um, you don't have to go out and buy a whole roll of brown paper or anything um, and I'm using um, some watercolours, these are great and it just means that you've got on hand a whole load of sort of colours already there and I use the um, lid as a little palette. So obviously you'll need paint brushes, a thin and a thick one. I only ever use a thin and a thick one actually, I don't use any others. Um, I use a two and a six in sizes and that's all, all you'll need. Uh, obviously some glue and scissors and normal pencils and also some coloured pencils um, in a brown and a pink and a white, but your set of pencils that you have at home be fine. You'll also need a black pen like this. This pen is a fine liner, but it's not as fine as the normal pen I use. It's got a little bit more weight to it. But if you do want to use a fine liner, it'll just mean you'll have to kind of go over the lines twice so they're not, they don't disappear because we're going to be drawing onto tissue. So the first thing to do is to choose which of the templates you want to use. Um, so I'm going to do the simple one. So what we're going to do we're going to use quite a sharp pencil and we're going to draw over every line that you can see using your sharp pencil. Press quite firmly so that when you do turn the page over and rub over the back, the lines definitely come out onto your book. So you're going to draw all the details. So these spoons here have got some little squirrels. We're going to make sure we don't miss those. And this plate, has got lovely sort of pie frill edging and I'm going to make sure that that is all drawn around. Don't worry too much about the detail of this, this is just to kind of um, uh, show you an example. Draw the shape of the teacup which you can always change later because some of the teacups on the reference are too good to miss and you might want to alter the shape um, to replicate some of those more um, interesting shapes of teacups and plates etc. So once you've drawn over the whole image, we're then going to turn it over and place it on your sketchbook page. Um, try not to let it move around. Actually, sometimes it's quite useful to just use um, a little paper clip in each corner so you know it's not going to move around. Because especially if you're doing the slightly more complicated page, it's going to take quite a lot of rubbing over. Um, and so you want to make sure that it doesn't um, move around so the lines are in the same place. Taking your pencil, you're going to rub over the whole image. And because you've pressed quite hard on the other side, you'll see the indentations and that'll help you not to miss any of the lines that you've created. Keep turning your pencil around so that you're using the edge of the pencil. Just means it's got a bit more force behind it and you're not in danger of ripping the page with a sharp pointy end. So, when you've covered your whole sheet of paper, you'll reveal the whole image 
transfer nicely onto your sketchbook page. So there, now the fun begins. It's time to add some colour. I'm going to show you some lovely examples here. So you want your plates to kind of be ready for cakes and biscuits and uh, any sort of detail. Uh, so using your watercolour, um, just make sure that every surface is covered. What you don't want to do is add the biscuits and then in hindsight add the colour. Um, so you'll see this one is done by um, a boy and I think he is 12 and um, he's left the paper white but he has put all the detail on the plates before adding his, his biscuits. This person, if you've got a gold pen, has, um, has added detail uh, with a sort of gold um, fine liner, which is, which is a really lovely touch. And be as colourful or as vibrant as you want. So this is the more detailed spread, um, and this lady um, just loved doing this and has added some really beautiful detail on her teacups and her plates. You can see how the reference is useful because here there's a little bit of an edge of a plate with a squirrel on it, and she's been inspired that and recreated that it looks really effective. So once you're happy with the plates and the cups, we can do the biscuits. So the biscuits are so fun to do. Let's start with a custard cream. It's such a beautiful design, the custard cream. What we're going to do, we're just going to use the brown envelope and um, we're going to cut out a um, bit of paper from the brown envelope and cut it into a sort of biscuity shape. Um, and they've got quite nice roundy edges. So you've got a nice little roundy biscuit. <laughs> and then using a sharp white pencil, we're just going to, I mean, you could just copy a biscuit <laughs> or on the reference you'll find custard creams. We're just going to draw that detail on using a white pencil. Um, and this is something that, um, you know, a, a child could make look really, really effective and um, keep the pencil really nice and sharp because there's um, a lot of detail on a custard cream. And press firmly so it's really white um, and there's lots of lovely squiggles. Make it your own as well. I mean, just sort of embellish it. Um, I'm just going to do some curls and uh, make it look a little bit biscuity. If you wanted to add a little bit of dark to the white that you've just um, just created. It just means that it looks three-dimensional. So I won't do the whole biscuit because you'll be bored. So then your biscuit, very hurried little custard cream, but nonetheless looks like a biscuit. Um, and then you're ready to um, position that on your painted plate. You know, if you wanted to make a, a party ring, for example, um, get a tissue. There's l the lovely thing about tissues is they're almost sort of biscuit coloured already. Cut out a circle, fold it in half and just cut out another semicircle inside to reveal your your potty ring. And then if you're going to, to glue this down and use um, again pencil, we're just going to sort of tap it down all the way around so it doesn't tear. And then you stick it down onto your plate to give that lovely flat colour. And then adding on the detail is really fun. So once it's stuck down, um, you won't be able to do it before it's stuck down because obviously it'll tear. Um, you're just going to draw on um, the little wavy lines and you can see there the little lines that they have on those party rings. It starts to really look like a party ring biscuit. So this won't probably need any highlights because it's so light, you won't see any. And there you have your party ring biscuit. And then for uh, a bourbon or an Oreo, so you're going to use brown tissue. So we'll do an Oreo and we're going to cut it into a circle. Um, and so glue this down wherever you want it. Because again, it's much easier to do once it's sort of glued down. Then you're going to take your black pen um, and um, using reference, or I've got an actual Oreo here, it might be quite a good excuse to go and buy all these biscuits um, that uh, <laughs> we've had quite a few today. Um, <laughs> and you're just going to put all that detail that you can see on the biscuit onto your page. And this is why it's going to be easier to work on um, once you've glued the tissue down 
um, as opposed to doing it um, prior to gluing it down. So you'll have all that detail with a slightly thicker pen. The tissue really absorbs this pen quite nicely actually. And there's some really lovely designs on these biscuits and you don't really sort of notice them um, but there's sort of heart shapes and there's a lot of um, imagery that you probably haven't even seen before you'll start noticing now on biscuits. They've got almost sort of like little shields and lots of little triangles and dots um, but it'll pretty soon start looking like um, the real thing. I won't do the whole thing now but you'll see it's starting to take shape. So once you've done that, take a sharp white pencil and just add a little bit of detail um, and again it'll just make it feel nice and sort of three-dimensional and it'll bring it out um, and you'll feel like you can sort of almost pick it up from the page. And once you've done the whole biscuit, I'll find an example for you. Here's a lovely one which a child has done. He hasn't done all the detail, but you can see how it very much looks like an Oreo biscuit. So the same goes with the bourbon. You're going to cut a um, biscuit shape and um, stick it down. And then using a pen, you're going to draw on top. Very simple, really simple, but so effective. Drawing on those lovely dots. Just copy what the bourbon does, and that's why it's quite important. It's quite a thick pen. And then trying to sort of copy the writing, and then you might want to sort of add a little bit of detail around it to make it look quite sort of biscuity. Now, the other thing we can do is um, taking that white again, giving it a bit of three-dimensional highlights and it just again it kind of brings it out and it's quite an effective way of again making it look like it's a real biscuit. You can also use a brown pencil for something like a rich tea or nice biscuit and then just add that highlight again to give it that sort of lift and if you want to do something like a pink wafer biscuit or something, then obviously pink tissue is fine. Um, and then stick that down and then use a dark pencil to create that sort of um, crisscross effect, which um, they're sort of well known for. And then using this again, it just gives it a little bit of highlight um, and starts to really <laughs> look like a little pink wafer biscuit. Um, so it depends how patient you are. Um, but if you, if you do have time to do every little one, it will look fantastic and really biscuit-like. So with regards to any sort of fairy cakes, it's a really, again, using the tissue is a really lovely tool to get that um, sort of base colour without any paint and also having to, using a colour pencil, adding that detail. Um, it's very satisfying, especially for, for children, lovely to draw. Um, and anything like this where you can add bits um, afterwards you've done your plates kind of you know it just kind of works the composition for you she's actually found some um, different kinds of papers that she already had to, to sort of make the bases likewise with her teapots we're talking about silver and gold paint she's, she's added a few bits of silver and gold so it doesn't matter if you go sort of off-piste. This child has decided just to use watercolours, but still it's incredibly charming. You've got the reference, you've got everything you need, and hopefully you'll end up with a, a fabulous tea party spread. If you want to share this and see what everyone else is doing, um, share ideas, um, then uh, the hashtag to use is Sketchbook Club Tea Party. Um, and I can't wait, to, I cannot wait to see them. They're so colourful and beautiful. Um, so yes, I hope I'm going to eat these biscuits now. Mm -hmm.